Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of NVIDIA's GTC, the conference for the era of AI. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're here for three days getting all the action with our run and gun pop-up cube. We'll go, we'll do whatever it takes to get that story where there's dropping in, one camera, three cameras, full stage, whatever it takes, the cube is there. We got you covered and we have here our uh, cube contributor, cube collective member, Sarbjeet Joal, uh, analyst, uh, friend of the cube, out there doing the analyst notebook, I call it, because you know, he really doesn't have a notebook, he's got an iPhone <laughs> and he's got probably a notebook, but Sarbjeet, great to see you. Um, you know, one of the things I love about how you attack events is you really kind of go out the keynote by the way, your keynote uh, tweet that went viral, just getting that data out there really fast really does the community great service. So I want to say thanks for that. And number two is you always like to go and check out all the sessions, check out the hallway conversation. So um, I love, I call it the analyst notebook section because you're kind of the notebook and it's a good summary. So uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks, John. Actually, uh, I saw your coverage from yesterday with Zias and, and you and Dave. Well, that, I think that segment, segment summed up the first two days um, after you guys had a session yeah. with Jensen uh, Q&A, right? So that was awesome. Yep, um, I'm happy to. What's well, so, well, so the take? So I, you know, you had a bunch of dinners. That you had a bunch of people that they're brainstorming. What's the conversations like? What is the conversations in the hallways? Mm -hmm. What's the conversations at the events and the parties that you're seeing? Um, obviously, we saw the keynote. Jensen was well documented. It's a new era. It's not a pre-recorded era. It's a generative era. Um, Everything's yeah. changed, how software's built's changed, the computer has changed, it's now a system. You got the AI Foundry, which is a bunch of NIMS, which is an a API to NVIDIA, and you got yeah, Neo Retriever, which is such a re rag, which is retrieval augmentation generation, yeah. and then you got the robotics, and this, the thing you didn't talk about is the telecom side. So yes. again, tell us what you're hearing in the hallways. Hallways uh, discussions are like, uh, my sort of interpretation is that things don't change, um, as fast as what Jensen wants to change. So it's a new paradigm shift, right? So going from CPU to, to GPU, uh, the way we program our systems, especially the systems of record, we're not going to change that to be programmed by Gen AI, for example, right? Because there's a lot of hallucination problems and like we're trying to figure that stuff out, if you will, right? Over time, these things will improve. Of course, there's code generation in place, and I'm a, I'm a coder at heart, and I've coded many systems, and I have played with the, the Gen AI code generation. It's not that good. It's just rudimentary, you know, crud, <laughs> you know. It's just, it does the basic stuff, right? It does the coding, but it doesn't do programming, what I call it. So, long story short, the, this is just the beginning. It will take a while for AI to give the fruit what we are promising through these narratives. So it's, I think it's going to be hurry up and wait, but definitely they are killing it with their, you know, compute think, speed and, and having the memory next sitting next to the compute and the, the multi terabyte, you know. I want to get speeds. your, I want to get your, first of all, great analysis. I want to get your take on the show itself because, you know, you got this as a, a stake in the ground as an inflection point. You got people here that, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be here, right? I don't say that they shouldn't be here. They shouldn't, shouldn't be here in the sense of, in the classical GDC yeah. fashion, it's a freaking developers conference. Yet you got hedge fund guys, you got VCs, you got startups popping up, a lot of money to be made. This is clearly the next wave, so a lot of people are here. So this represents kind of like that cultural moment in time. Yeah. But you got to look at this and say, is it an enterprise show or is it a consumer show? Because AI today, if you look at all the hyperscale investments on the AI side, it's essentially an investment in the consumer hyperscalers. Meta, for instance, ByteDance, Tencent, you name all those companies, those are consumer-oriented social media networking companies, yet you got a bunch of hosters coming in here with DGX Cloud. Where's the demand and where's the supply going to go? Because remember, one of the things that's coming out of NVIDIA is that there's still a huge demand for the product. Okay, software, no one's got a chance against CUDA, clearly, they got an edge there. But yeah. NVIDIA doesn't sell software. They sell GPUs, they're a chip company. No, but they want so, to sell software now. They are going to sell no, they're, software. They're selling a going, license for, what if I remember, for, CUDA. for GPU. For GPU per year, so they are going to make they're money selling from that. GPUs. So actually they are. Are they selling GPUs or are they selling a license to the software on the GPU? They are, they are trying to do both. Actually that, that messaging is confusing in many ways, because it also 
collides with their customers. It collides with what AWS is doing, it collides with what Google Cloud is doing. They are trying to give that as a service to the builders, if you will, right? They are the platforms, they are PaaS, platform as a service. The, it happens, in, historically speaking, it happens to many companies when they are a technology provider mm -hmm. and they want to be a service provider, they get lost in that transition. Most of the companies get lost and Explain. they Explain that dynamic. So, yeah. In so, what way that they're too con too focused on the platform, not on the ecosystem, or what's where they get lost? No. Okay. Technology provider versus service provider. So when you are providing the technology, you are giving it to every service provider so they can build stuff and give it to the builders of these applications, yep. right? Mm -hmm. but that's the technology provider. Like you are working with many service providers. You're enabling people yeah, to do it, stuff. Exactly. So what, if you try to be the service provider, now you are competing with other service providers and, and then it, it muddies the waters. VMware wanted to do their own public cloud and they scraped that, sort of canceled yeah. that, right? <laughs> that was the main reason because then nobody will pick up pick VMware stack to put it's in It's the classic AWS. strategy problem. Are you stuck in the middle between two strategies? Exactly. Are, are you saying that NVIDIA is trying to be a service provider or are they at least still leaning to technology provider or are they telegraphing a little bit of a service provider? I, I think they, they are t telegraphing some, they have inclination to be service provider in, in some sense and I hope I am wrong reading that wrong because if they are trying to do that, they're going to stumble. That's what my Jensen take is. said on his speech. We are building a data center, just selling it part by part, um, and that's what the GPUs is doing the allocation. So they are providing a service. I mean, they're clearly the DGX cloud is a service, or is that technology? Even so, it's, again, the lines that's are blurring. Close. It's a great point, and again, it's a critical question for Nvidia because I was saying earlier on the show floor when I was wandering around and and talking to some influencers and some executives. They asked me and I said, hey, you can't have an ecosystem play with AI Foundry if you're going to be a closed garden. Yeah. So if you're a closed garden, ecosystems don't thrive because the control points the closed garden. Closed garden meaning I'm a monolithic system and I'm going to basically sell you as a service and charge on the software license on, per GPU, which is basically a GPU license. So, you know, that's going to be a tough call. Will AI Foundry, will that flower up and grow? I, or is it a red herring? Is it a stalking horse? But on the other hand, playing devil's advocate here, um, like John Ford does on CNBC, on the other hand, he is a segment, right? <laughs> the two hand on, on the other hand. On one hand, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, what Jensen and company, what they have done is, they have, an urge, they have put a lot of energy behind all these researchers in different domains to use the computing to describe their industries digitally. So they, the whole idea of digital twin is very revolutionary in my way, my point of view, because you can create these products using digital twins before even you muck around with the physicality of these systems. So that's huge actually, it saves a lot of time and money and agony, you know. So mRNA vaccine is one example, <laughs> you know, like building cars. Um, there are cars on the floor here of, the, of this show, right? Um, there's auto industry heavily represented here, mm -hmm. and there's telco, um, there's like financials, all kind of industries are like. Uh, okay, so let me ask you a question. So if you, as you walk the show floor here, which by the way, it could be bigger, it is pretty tight, small space, this place is kind of busting out at the seams here. If you had to look forward next year, okay, we heard this question earlier, um, what's going to be different next year at GTC, what's going to change in the next 12 months in the industry? What's going to the show floor going to look like, in your opinion? What's if you had to throw a, a dart at the board, what would you say? I think this show will be bigger, definitely. Uh, there will be more use cases. There will be some more like a practicality attached to the use cases. Right now, it's all like you know experimentation. Mm -hmm. So there, 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 there might, might be fewer use cases which are in sort of pre-production stage, if you will. Right, so that's what I'm expecting. What's your ex um, note in your notebook that you've been collecting all the observations here in the hallway sessions? What's the big takeaway this year from your perspective as you, as you compile all the data? What's it telling you? Uh, I think the main, th main thing is that you can't avoid NVIDIA and their stack if you are serious about Gen AI and AI in, in general and Gen AI in particular. So that, message is 
loud and clear. Other people are trying to catch up, you know, AMDs of the world yeah. and, and, and Intel's of the world, right? So the programmability of these chips is super important. The one thing actually, actually I tweeted a few days back, a couple days back, I think maybe after the keynote, that we need standards to lower the, the cost of, you know, doing AI. And also, not only the cost, but having lower power consumption. So we need specialized chips so we can use lower power. Because the whole idea is that when you have a computer, if it is idle, like 70% of, of, of your GPUs or CPUs are idle, you're wasting a lot of energy. And yeah. Energy is power is a new Power yes. is a new envelope. That's yeah. the new constraint that, that design around. I think one of the things I think is going to be different, and this is interesting that you brought that up, power, is I think you're going to see a lot more competition. I think NVIDIA has raised the bar, it's a high bar, yeah. on, on the generative AI systems approach. My big takeaway from this year is two things. One, the accelerated computing is a great narrative. I think Jensen hit a home run on that piece. I think this idea of a monolithic system that's not like a mainframe, but it's like it's more distributed computing, is going to pull forward a bunch of use cases for AI to be accelerated faster. So one, you'll see more successes on use cases that are prime for what they're building with their hardware and their performance. The second thing that jumps out at me is, I think this sets the standard now for what we've been calling clustered systems. A way has now been shown how to organize servers in multiple configurations. You mentioned power. We were just talking to the Broadcom executives this morning about power, ethernet, that whole spine thing. InfiniBand is way more expensive than on a port basis than you say Ethernet. Wide open, um, with an open standard, and connects with PCIe is just as good of a switch in those configurations. And with Broadcom's retimer, you're not going to go distance within the rack. And Ethernet lowers the power envelope in the rack and lowers your cooling requirements. So what you're seeing is a complete reconstruction of what a system is. So I think this idea of what the rack used to be. Remember, stack and rack those, those yes. blades, throw the top of rack switch up there and connect the next rack. That's what the IT was for what, two decades? Yeah, Okay. More than that. I think now we're on an IT platform that's going to be clustered systems, my word, maybe it's a better word, AI systems, that are going to have to work to support multiple workloads in a distributed computing paradigm. That's public cloud, on-premise, edge, and the software have, will have to be compatible to run in that super configuration. It's like a super cloud configuration. And you're yeah. going to see the, the rise of, of NVIDIA clearly leading the way, but I think competition will come in. Yep. And that's going to come they down won't. to who can design the best low power, high speed networking interconnects for these new systems. And AMD's not going to lie down. All these other chips aren't going to lie down and let NVIDIA run, run to the end zone. No, we, we need the vendor diversity, like that, that's, a, that's the need of the hour actually. We, we have gone through this, like mm. we, we want competition, we want competition. Two more observations. One is that can you do um, AI in colos, right, or on-prem versus doing that on the cloud? So that was the discussion. And the answer, observation is yes or, you, <laughs> or no? <laughs> the answer is yes, yeah. Okay, you can it. do it both places, okay. You can do it uh, or, or both places, but the, I think the cloud guys are saying, no, 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 the, the, the colos don't have enough power, power, what AI yeah. needs, to, to give you the performance and, and, and do AI in a sort of pro manner. You know, you can do like, you know, rudimentary testing and all that it, stuff, it colors, but, but I mean, you do want, want to do production. Well, but if you could do distributed computing, I mean, Amazon's Outpost was theoretically a good idea. Yeah. You put an edge device, different hardware, but you don't need to use Outpost, for instance, with a, with a colo that has uses all their power. Again, you optimize the racks in that facility and you build around the constraints of that power and then you find another colo. So the, I think the idea of having a diverse colo environment is just the nature of distributed computing. If the speeds and the interconnects, whether it's optical across campus, across the internet, then you have a whole nother arc. Again, back to the systems yes, design. Yes, systems thinking. So like, CNBC wrote an article today that, that Equinix is selling the pipe dream of AI. You know, like, I'm, like I'm, going to, I'm going to. I don't I'm think there's a pipe way, dream. I, I think, think it's, it's reality. Okay. I am going to their dinner, so I can't say much about that right now. CNBC <laughs> dinner or? <laughs> no, 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 Equinix. Okay. And, it's uh, not a pipe dream. Media. It's I not a pipe CNBC dream. Got but that they, wrong. somebody just wrote this. Uh, pipe catchy. as in like the fat pipe internet, or like pipe dream as in not gettable? I think it's a, it's a pun there. Okay. So uh, the other uh, observation 
Well, it's now okay. I'm forgetting that the second same thing now. Like you, uh, first I lost my thought. Was was the um, <laughs> your first observation was the power? Yeah. No, the other thing was the the, the session with all these uh, scientists or or these experts from different domains. Um, uh, Jensen did that today. Yeah. So that was uh, I think uh, eye opener from many angles because these researchers also questioned the the need for that much GPU actually during yeah. that talk to say, if you want to add two plus two, do you need a, a model with you know two trillion parameters to do that math? Or you can just go to CPU and say, let yeah. me do this for me. So I think the switching of the computing needs on the fly yeah. between CPU and GPU, that is going to be the biggest sort of um, um, work in progress in next two to five years or I so. Think, I think the paradigm, that observation about that is a good one. I think, and this applies to what Jens was saying about the word discovery versus design. Drug discovery, you're kind of fumbling around to discover something and then lock it in. With the idea of the Omniverse, which they've been promoting as their digital twin platform, you can actually do all that in simulation and then design something. So you, it's drug design, not drug discovery, an example yeah. of finding cures to things. And that brings up my point about custom silicon, because if you're looking at the, 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 what Broadcoms and these, these players are doing is that with automation and foundation, open source, open standard foundation models and technologies, you can actually do all that automation on the front end and get chips to the market within three to seven months. Okay, and then a three months production ramp, so within a year, you can have chips custom chips designed for workloads. So I think you're going to start to see this notion of custom chips at scale, mass scale, designed for all workloads. So every workload that's in production, if it's a good workload, will be designed specifically for yep. the workload. So yep, yep. I think AI, we're going into the systems thinking mindset with the notion of designing something use case purpose built is the future. And I think AI is showing that you can do that and the benefits are multifold because now you have intelligence built in to the applications that's never seen before. So I think watch that custom silicon market, that's going to change the infrastructure game with clustered systems. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I think because having, that op having open standards, it makes the economics better on all fronts. Power, cooling, and you know diversity of vendors, because if there's only one player in the game, you know like they're going to charge anything. So that's the, my, the, final the observ my final my observation, that, and, I'll, and I'll pass it off to you to get a reaction and then close out, is the idea of software defined versus physical. And we had this conversation in context of storage. So for example, Pure Storage is a company that has um, flash arrays. You got um, Dell makes Blade servers. So you got flash array, there's a physical, where compute is in, in, the, in, in Pierre's case, compute is on the, the flash array. Yeah. In blades, the compute is on the blade. When you separate compute and storage, you're starting to think, if you're not software defined, the physical fabric has to be, sub, uh, the physical materials has to be built for software defined. So I think if you're not looking at a software defined environment going forward, mm -hmm. you might be in a tough hurt. So what's your reaction to that? I, I, Am I overreacting on that or what? No, I, I think there might be some overreaction there, but uh, you have a point there. Because if you are separating the, the computer from the physical things, you ha it has to be software defined. If it is not, then it's like more like embedded software into that hardware, and that's, the, that, that's old stack sort of paradigm. And the beauty of having software defined physical assets is that we can get the most juice out, out of these things, and because most of these things will need power to run and and up and up upkeep, and we, we want to shut these things down when we don't need them. So again, the switching of the computing from GPU to, to CPU or any other mechanism which emerges. Sorry, guys, there's a lot of sound coming behind us. So I I think that software defined everything is the future, and we, we see that sort of happening. Everything's I see connected. That happening in, in Everything's connected. Sarb G. Chowalk, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Real quick Thank plug, you. what are you working on right now? What, what's, your, what's getting your fancy right now? What's, what's got your attention and what are you working on? What I'm working on is like, I'm just extending my work with the soft economics of systems creation versus economics of system, systems operations. I am spending a lot of time on that. 
So because creation versus operation are two different things, and at some point we switch to operation. You mean creation and, versus ops? Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. Dev versus ops, right? And I have said that many times. DevOps has done a lot of like damage to our industry. And I, I was giving examples why, because the you know. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I agree with that, but, but no, okay. no, actually, that's another podcast. Yeah, that, that's that was a, a whole other one. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> we yeah. might debate that one, arm wrestle. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, good to have you on, on the queue. Appreciate the commentary as, as always. Sarjit so Joel here, breaking it down with the analyst angle here. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. As the music plays, we are going to exit out of day three of GTC. Thanks for watching. Thank you, guys.